Hi there, it's Bonnie from Dwelling Logs. Today I want to go through what I am researching and thinking about for my five-year-old right now. It is January and next fall he's going to be entering into grade one and I want to look at the different language arts grade one curriculums. We have loved Abeka math this year. We have, we have liked Abeka grammar, the letters book, uh, and we do a different reader set. We do Bob readers. Uh, we do a Becca writing, cursive writing. We do spelling you C, uh, A. So for the fall though, I want to explore the different options and make a selection based on some research. I want to explore what a Becca has to offer for grade one. I want to explore, explode the code. We did that in K4, their get ready for the code, get set for the code and go for the code books, which we loved. And yeah, I want to see what else is out there. So we've got a Becca, explode the code. I want to go into a little Charlotte Mason and see what uh, language lessons for living education is like. So follow along with this video if you want to compare some grade one curriculum with me and let's see if we can make a good decision for our little guys. So let me tell you where we are at right now. Right now we are halfway through kindergarten and I'm looking at what we should do for grade one coming up. Now going back for K4, all we did is with K4 was the explode the code A, B, and C. One was called get ready for the code, one was called get set for the code, and the other one was go for the code. And those were basically just learning alphabet. Uh, they were learning alphabet sounds um, a little bit, uh, patterns, things like that, basic workbooks, very plain, very sensible workbooks. But the only reason why I had them was to introduce seat work. So my goals for K4 for my four-year-old son was learning through play. Uh, most of our school time, quote unquote, was on the floor. Uh, introduce seat work in short periods of time as a fun time too. I did this only because I wanted his K5 abilities to include being able to sit at a table and do work as well as getting set up for kindergarten or sorry for grade one. Because I know as soon as grade one hits, then I'm going to want him to sit there for longer. So my whole point of having books to do or worksheets or whatever at the table was just to make this a fun time. It wasn't the purpose of learning something and getting something done or finishing a book. The whole purpose was, look, table time can be fun. And if it wasn't fun, we weren't going to do it. It was definitely just all centered around positivity. And I know that teaching K-4 or ki even kindergarten is kind of controversial in the homeschooling circles. You know, how early should you start? And basically my, my, my upbringing of being homeschooled, I was so excited when my child turned four to homeschool because I knew we were going in that direction that just not homeschooling for K-4 or K-5 wasn't even an option. So for K-4, my purpose was not academics. My purpose was let's make you think that school is great because it is. So coming to this year, our academic standards for where we live is basically uh, in kindergarten, kids need to know their ABCs. They need to know the sounds that the letters make. They need to be able to count to 10 and they need to have normal social interaction. That's it. And so very low standards. My kid was already there before kindergarten started. So I started looking at what curriculum would fit us best. I grew up on a Becca, so I gravitated right to a Becca as well. Now, the thing about that was if you go to a Becca and you look up the other K5, you get this huge, humongous kit. If you love a kit and you have no creativity of your own and you need a go-to of what exactly to do all day long, go ahead, buy the kit. It's great. It's got everything you need. I am too creative for that. And I also don't want homeschool to be that structured in my house. So the kit was not for me. However... I did purchase the letters and sounds book and the number skills book and the cursive writing book. I do like cursive writing. I think that it's not supposed to go out of fashion yet. So I did want cursive writing or at least I wanted to try it. And that's all I bought. Uh, the one thing that I bought later on was the teacher's manual. Now, if you are doing the kit, you need the manual. Absolutely. You won't know what to do with all this stuff without the teacher's lesson guide. But I thought I could get away with just the workbooks. And I was coming into work pages where I was like, I'm so confused. What is this and what's supposed to be going on? So the teacher's lesson planner does help with that. On the other hand, now that I've spent a whole 50 bucks on this big lesson planner, I have to say I hardly use it. I only use it when I'm confused about the worksheets. If you're a creative person, if you have a communication ability with your child, if you don't have trouble in that area, then I would say you could even do without the lesson 
book because everything's in the worksheets. And if you just glance at the worksheets before you get started, you can see what is expected to be learned. If you see something new that your child doesn't know, don't do the worksheet yet. Talk about it. Spend some time doing your own teaching before you get there and you can avoid the lesson book completely. However, if you do not communicate well with your child, if you don't know how to speak in a five-year-old's language that they can understand clearly, and if that's a difficult area for you, maybe you want the lesson book just to communicate because there's bolded phrases that you actually like say out loud to your child in the lesson in this book. So maybe you need that, but I kind of regret purchasing the lesson planner though. So moving on to this year, I don't know what I'm going to do. Am I going to continue on to a Becca grade one? Am I going to do a different program? I don't, my goals aren't to have my kid be the most advanced, smartest, genius kid ever, unless they naturally lend themselves that way. And I want homeschooling to be fun and something that they can have. My child that is going into grade one, he loves table time, he loves paperwork, he's super duper easy to teach. So I'm not looking for an alternative curriculum because I'm having difficulty with a Becca. I'm actually liking a Becca. But I don't need to push him past where he needs to be. If there's some room to slow down and relax and get creative and know what we're learning more, uh, to learn more naturally through life, through the things that we want to learn about, not what the curriculum says to learn about, then I want to take that time to slow down and switch it up. So first of all, let's talk about what Abeka has for us in grade one. I'll tell you right off the hop, I am planning on doing grade one math with them again. I am planning on continuing on our writing and phonics with Abeka because their phonics program is awesome and we've already been going on it and it, it's been very good for us. However, I do want to look at other things for language arts. They do have their language skills book, spelling and poetry and letters and sounds. And I don't know that I'm going to do any of those, but let's just peek inside them. So letters and sounds starts off, you know, matching pictures to three or four letter words with short vowel sounds. Then about a quarter of the way through, you're going to move to suffixes like ing. About halfway through, they're going to know things like the word glove. It's not glove, it's glove. It rhymes with love. So the things that break the rules in the phonics world. Also harder blends like AI, like hair and chair. By the end of the book, they're even learning things like EDG or ADG, as well as opposites. Now, the language one is starting out matching things like EAT, EAT, the special sounds like GO, where it's not GA, it's GO, and HE instead of HE. About a quarter of the way through, they're looking at things that sound the same, like TOAD and MODE, but they're spelt the same. Sometimes it could be OA, sometimes it could be OED. Halfway through, they're already doing sentences like uh, writing, filling in the sentences to start on the writing path. And I see by the end of the book, they have some copy work, etc. That's kind of actually, that page kind of looks like what we're doing right now in our writing book for kindergarten. But they probably have a few extra sounds and things like that that the kids are supposed to know in the Abeka grade one. And the writing with phonics, I will do again with grade one. Uh, the cursive is going well with us this year, so I want to continue on that. But basically, it's just copy work. It's Copy the letter, write it out, copy the sentence, write it out again. So a lot of trace and write, like the whole time. So if you want a resource for that, then great. If you think you can pull your own resources together for that, then that's great too. Uh, their writing isn't exactly stellar above anything else. Let's move on to master books with language lessons for a living education. And this is something that I've been very interested in learning about. Uh, but they're, they don't have a language lessons for living education for grade one. They only start that at grade two. So their grade one package includes a basic language skills teacher guide that has your worksheets in it. It has lesson plans. You don't have to have a million books with this. It does come with three extra books that work with the teacher guide. There are things and sheets that your kids will do that relate to those books. So you kind of do need the whole package uh, if you're going to do that. But it's still very simple. The only workbook there is within your teacher guide that you purchase. And it's going to expect that you have a little bit of a foundation with phonics before you start. It's going to start at, again, like three-letter words, soft vowel sounds. It's going to introduce reading, writing, capitalization, and punctuation in this book. About a quarter of the way through, it's into blends like IE, 
halfway through, it's into blends like EW and vowel combinations like the two vowel rule. You're going to hit the I before E except after C and when sounding like A is a neighbor away. And by the end of the book, they're reading words like soup, whey, cheese, toast. So definitely some really good skills learned in that book. Just because I have a little bit of an assumption that Abeka might have put us a little bit ahead, I did look at Language Lessons for Living not for grade two and just see where it's at. Is this too far for us? So it's going to start out with um, just reviewing your alphabet, reviewing your vowels. It shoots right off working with what is a noun and they're already right away asking for free writing. So I do think this is going to be too far to, too far to jump to from where we are at right now in kindergarten. By the end of the book, you're writing stories and doing all punctuation, uh, you know, that's for basic language. They'll even touch on the names of the week and the months of the year. So it almost seems doable, but I still think I won't jump to number two just yet. Even though my guy is, I feel like, a little bit ahead of the, ahead of the game, I think if I were to go with Master Books, I would start with their grade one. So let's talk about Explode the Code. I have an older version of Explode the Code. This one's copyright in like 1984, but it's pretty much the same nowadays as it was as well. This just happens to be an older copy that I have. Um, so basically, uh, you start out in your grade one Explode the Code with short A, and you're going to go through all the different short sounds for all of the vowels all the way to the end of the book. They don't even hit long vowels in the book at all. So I would say right off the hop that this one is going to be behind where my son is at after using a Becca. Not to say that it's behind in our provincial standards because it definitely isn't. It hits all of the standards for language arts for sure for grade one where I live. Really, their ing the English requirements for grade one is just basically what are words and how can I use them? How can I speak well with others and know I'm using the right words? It's pretty low key as far as standards go. So this is definitely up to standards where we are. And uh, it's a very simple book. One thing, there's no colors in it. It's all black and white. Now, that being said, when my kid was in grade uh, K4, he had Explode the Code books, and they were black and white like this, and he loved them. He was so excited. It, it's not overwhelming, so this may be a good option uh, if you have a child who just needs a little bit of a slower introduction to, uh, to words and to vowel sounds. But Explode the Code, number one, think about your short vowel sounds. That's basically what you're going to do in different activities. And I think kids would like this book because it is simple, and it also rep repeats the style of teaching throughout the book as you learn the different vowels. So kids kind of get confident to know what to expect. And it can be so great for a child to be able to finish a worksheet and be proud of what they did and confident. There's a lot to be said. After being a little surprised that number one for Explode the Code was only short vowel sounds, I did go to their website just to see what they recommend. And Explode the Code actually has book one, two, and three, but Book one, two, and three are recommended for grades one to four. So that's a very wide grade range. And so I took a look at book number two. And book number two basically goes through all of your initial blends, consonant blends. And book number three focuses on uh, one syllable words ending with long vowels and consonant blends and some uh, digraphs like blends like CH and TCH as well as diphthongs like a o a and o w sounds like that so it does go a little bit farther but again i am thinking that leaving a becca k5 we are already at this level if not past it i'm going to give you guys a little glimpse into our spelling you see a i actually purchased this at christmas time to add to our k5 year because it just seemed to go with what we were doing now this is more along the lines of a grade one book in general although they don't go by grades with spelling you see so it's the book a and basically you're dealing with short vowel sounds you're going through and children are learning uh, how to how to write manuscript uh, the letters properly they really really uh, emphasize on using the correct pencil grip following the right pattern when you write your letters and saying the sounds as you write it's if you read on their website they're all about 
the verbal helping your mind remember how to spell things. And so this is just an introductory course. Your kids aren't going to get a spelling list that they memorize. They're going to get this book and they're going to learn these words and write them and just have 10 minutes of writing each day that just naturally sort of put these words in their correct spelling in their head. And yes, it's 10 minutes maximum. We usually do a sheet in two to three minutes and we usually set a timer for it. My child loves to race for the clock and it's not meant to be a burden. This subject is basically meant to be fun and make writing and spelling fun. Spelling you see B is going to be a little different. Now it's going to be a lot of copy work, but the same mentality. You want it to be under 10 minutes a day that the child spends doing their spelling book. And it's all a philosophy of learning spelling, not through lists and memorizing and drilling, but through natural use. They're still going to be practicing their letters. They're still going to be making sure that they're, they're writing it correctly in the right direction. They're still going to be writing their three letter words at the start, but that will quickly change into four and five letter words. And definitely just a lot of copy work to give the child as much natural writing experience as possible. And hopefully as they write and experience writing in words, they will remember how they are written down and how to spell them. So that's basically what I'm looking at for next year going into grade one. My style of homeschooling is totally eclectic, so I'm not afraid to get bits and pieces from everywhere. So we will see what my decision is. I plan on doing a video before the next school year to show you guys what I decided on. And I hope this video was helpful and gave you a little bit of an inside peek into the different curriculums that are out there for grade one language arts. So thanks for watching this video. I hope that when the fall comes, we'll all be ready to go hit the next grade or the next education level if you don't use the numbers. And uh, thank you for listening and watching this from Dwelling Logs.